Now today I'll talk about handling negative emotions. And then if we have time, we talk about also handling sins, how to overcome sins. Because very often we have negative emotions and negative thinking. Handle negative emotions and negative thinking. How to handle those and have victory. Because if we don't have victory in those things, then we cannot be peaceful and joyful. And also, when we counsel people, many of the people that I counsel, many of the people who came for help have negative emotions or negative way of thinking. Actually, even people who don't come to us for help, I found that many Christians, uh, in some ways, they, uh, they are unhappy. They, they could be joyful in the praise and worship, but when they're at home, immediately, they would be in a, you know, not in a joyful mood. Uh, many Christians don't stay in a joyful mood all day long. And, and that is why, uh, you know, many people have burdens and they're unhappy and, and they don't have much strength. So we talk about how to handle this because these are very common problems that people have. <coughs> And when we can handle it, then we can help people. Okay? First, the teaching in the Bible. Proverbs 17.22. Proverbs 17.22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. So, dry, a joyful heart is good medicine. Um, you notice people who have health problems are people who worries a lot. People who worry a lot and unhappy and are unhappy and then the whole body is affected. The health is affected. And then people who are joyful and free, generally they are more energetic, more happy um, and, and healthy. So it's, you know, the Bible talks about this truth. And also doctors will tell you the same thing. Because they notice that when people are happy, then the body will function well. Every, every part of your body. Have you noticed when you are unhappy, immediately you lose your appetite? Has it happened to you? <laughs> when you are eating and then you hear a bad news and, and then suddenly you lose your appetite. So it affects your appetite. And then if you have someone who hurts you and then you find that you will lose sleep, right? It's very hard to fall asleep. And then even when you fall asleep, in the middle of the night, you wake up. And when you wake up, you are unhappy again. You think about that same thing again. So when we don't handle our emotions, it affects our health. It affects our, our ministry too. If on a day when you serve God, someone yell at you before you start to preach. Before you, you came to church. Your wife or your husband yelled at you, and then you came to church to serve God. Then you find that uh, you don't have confidence, you don't have strength. So it's very important that we keep ourselves in a, a joyful way that handle that we handle our life. And in Proverbs four twenty three, Proverbs four twenty three, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So guard your heart. Your heart is very important. To guard it from negative thinking and negative emotions. So that it's all positive, so it's all godly. You notice God's word is always positive. Now God's word does have warning and punishment. But the warning and punishment are to people who don't repent. And for the people of God, it's always, God is always telling you that uh, you know that as far as the heaven is above the earth, so great it is love toward those who fear Him. So when you fear God, His love will be very great toward you. And you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So the Bible always talks about God's blessings and God's plan in our life. That all the days of our life have been written in the book of life before one of them came to be. So our whole life it's all written. And, and, then, and then it says in the next verse, O Lord, 
how precious are your thoughts? That the thoughts of God are precious. That even when Israelites and the Israelites sin, God's plan was to bless them and strengthen the nation and draw them back to God. So God's heart is always blessing people. It's only when people don't repent and people continue to sin and then God will warn them and God will punish them. But still the goal is that they will repent. So we see that in the Bible it's always saying there is hope, there is hope. But we notice that people very often say, oh it's too difficult, uh, it's too hard, uh, I cannot do it, we cannot do it. This is negative thinking, it's pessimism, saying no, we cannot do it. Or negative emotions, oh unhappy, depressed. So this is very common and even among the Christians. Now, let me ask you, if you go to heaven one day, will you see the Christians in heaven worrying, oh, oh, the people on earth are not changing. They, oh, it's so hard to bring revival to them. Would the people in heaven like that be like that? No. In heaven, even when the things when things on earth are not so perfect, are not so good, the people in heaven are still rejoicing. And would God be frowning, oh, these people are so hard to change, they don't follow me, would God be doing that? No, He would be saying, you know, I have my plan, I will work on them. Now, even though it's a fact that many people are not willing to change, and I hope when you hear these messages that you will change and you will say everything is hopeful. Now when I go to different countries, different places, I see that many people don't change. But I still insist on going. Mm. I won't say it's useless, it's not going to change. I would say God's word is powerful, people will change. We can change God's people, no matter how many we can change, we still want to change the people. So in God, we are hopeful. And I hope you always talk to yourself in a positive way. And then in uh, Proverbs 14.30, Proverbs 14.30, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. So a sound heart, a heart that is healthy, is the life of the flesh. When the heart is sound, is healthy, then the body will have health and strength. But then if there is envy, it will be the rottenness of the bones. Then the whole person will, will, will be rotten. That the whole health and everything will be rotten. So we realize the Bible does teach that. It's very important that we keep a healthy heart, positive thinking, positive uh, emotions. And also in Luke 6.45, Luke 6.45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the tr evil treasure of the, his heart brings <laughs> forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. There is talk about that good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring good, bring forth good. That when a person is filled with good thoughts, with filled with goodness from God, then everything from the man will be good things. But then an evil man out of the evil treasure of the heart, inside his heart is evil treasure. And then the heart will bring forth evil. And you notice some people get angry easily. Have you known people like that? Yes. They're always easily offended. They always try to take advantage of people and when they don't get it, they get angry. And there is anger and there is greed. Frustration, you know, we see that in Hong Kong too. Sometimes we see in the public, I don't know if you have noticed that, in, even in the public, some people would yell at each other. One time, I was in one place in the washroom, a public washroom, and somebody was carrying a backpack very big, and the backpack bumped against someone. And then the person said, watch your backpack. And this person was so angry. He followed this man all the way, keep yelling at him, keep following him. When a man said that, watch your backpack, it's, 
It's right to say that, although he can say it in a nicer way. But then this man got very frustrated, even though he was wrong, he wanted to yell at that person. Have you seen things like that happen here? Yeah. yeah. So when people are angry, that frustration would come out all the time. One time, you know, I was driving and there was a four-way stop sign. That means every car that come to that point had to stop. And then the first car that come to the point will go first. And I went there, I was the first car, and then the next car came. But the next car came, didn't stop and go, and then hit the horn. And then there was a man, he came up from the side of the car, and he, yeah, he raised his arm and yeah. So filled with anger that there are people like that. Their whole life is always anger and frustration because they don't take good care of themselves. Now you are probably not like that, but inside us very often we'll have negative thoughts and negative emotions. And where does that come from? It comes from the sinful nature and it comes from wrongful expectation. People say, I want to make money, I want to make use of this situation. I want to take advantage of people. So when people have this heart, and then they're always greedy and want, always want to get something from other people, and then they get frustrated easily. Or people, they, you know, they, um, they expect the husband or wife to be you know, doing certain good things, and then the, parent, uh, the husband and wife don't do it. And then they get frustrated, and, and, and then they are unhappy, and they get angry. Actually, many, very often, even good Christians do that. Even good Christians. The, the wife might say, you never wash the dishes. Now, it's a fact that the husband didn't wash the dishes. But the wife say it in a way that she was frustrated. And then the frustration came out. And then, even though the man was wrong, he got angry. You always tell me to wash the dishes. Why don't you do it yourself? And they didn't realize that the words of each other, it's... It's just saying, like for instance, you say, pick up the chair, move the chair here. And then the people say, why don't you move it yourself? And it's, <coughs> yeah, it came from negative emotions of people. And also it came from, uh, you know, that someone is not thoughtful and think of how can I say it politely. And people didn't realize that, you know, what we say sometimes, there is hidden meaning, there is hidden message that uh, when I counsel many couples, very often uh, one person will say, he never did it, he won't obey, he's not sincere. Even though when the man said, I'm sorry, the woman will look at him and say, are you sincere? Now, you think about it. If the man at least takes the step to say, I'm sorry, in a counseling, I suggest to him to say sorry. And a woman would say, are you serious? <laughs> that makes the man unwilling to do any more. So I immediately, I would ask them, how would that make the husband feel? If you encourage your husband, you want to encourage your husband to, to change, what is a better way? What is a better way to say it? You would say, oh, I'm so happy you apologize, and we'll work together to make it better. We'll work together that we can improve our marriage. But people just don't do that. When people are slightly offended, you go to many places, if you just slightly offend people, people might hit you, might yell at you. Because people are not conscious, they don't pay attention to good relationship. They didn't emphasize good relationship. They emphasize, did you respect me? Did you say something nice to me? They emphasize that. Instead of emphasizing, relationship is more important. So very often when I counsel people, I ask them, what is more important? Relationship or that things are done better? Which one is more important? Let me ask you now. Which one is more important? Relationship or things are done in a better way? Relationship. relationship is more important. 
Now you can work on improvement. From time to time, you can work on improvement. Now, if this is one person, you want that person to improve. And you say, when you sing next time, can you sing louder? <laughs> Immediately, what does it do to the person? It will hurt his feeling. And then he would lose motivation, or he would fear, or he would be negative toward you. So it doesn't help. So we realize our words are very important. And also, very often, when we talk, there are two messages that come up. One is the verbal web message. One is the emotional message. For instance, you say, hurry up. There is a verbal message to hurry up. And then there is another message. What is the other message? Emotion. Emotion. Emotion that you are not doing it fast. Hurry up. Go ahead. Do it. You have to do it. And then the person will get frustrated. So be very careful how we speak. That are we bringing an emotional message. Also when people talk to us, they also have an emotional message. That emotion, and if someone says to you, do better next time, immediately how would you respond in your heart? You say, why do you speak to me like that, right? Yeah. So most people will be offended, and then they will get frustrated. But as a mature Christian, like for myself, if people talk to me like that, immediately I would discern this person. Discern this person, discern his feeling, his attitude. And then I say, why did he talk like that? And then I say, do I have to respond with anger? Now you think of it. If I go to a certain place and try to do training, and then someone did not move the chairs in a way I want them to move. I told them ahead of time, put the chairs in a certain way. And then he forgot about it. And then he didn't do it. And then I came and I got frustrated. I told you you have to do that. What would it, what would it do to my ministry? How would it affect my ministry? If I go to a certain place and then people don't do it the way that I want it. And then I got frustrated. How would it affect my ministry? I want to see you. Yeah, wasn't that, uh, they won't receive you. Uh huh. Yeah would be very unhappy yeah. and they might not want to receive me again. Yeah. So now it happens with this also with many other people. Like my wife, she's so nice to me now. If every day I hear her, every day, would she still stay being so nice to me and so have good feelings toward me? No, she would change. Now she might fear me. When are you gonna get angry? <laughs> And then she might feel, she don't, she, she might think, she doesn't understand me. What's happening inside me? That way I'm destroying my life. Emotions, negative emotions will destroy our life. Being affected by people will destroy our life. So when people talk, we pay attention. Their negative words, negative emotions will affect us, but we learn not to be affected by them. And then I will tell you how not to in a moment. But I'm analyzing people's words have emotions and then I want to say one more thing even when people don't have emotions when they talk people can pick up emotions I mean people will respond with emotions for instance <laughs> someone suggests to another person um, now it depends on how he suggested he might suggest it um, uh, in a very nice way he say Next time can we sing, can we listen to the music and all sing at the same pace, same timing, you know, suggest to this person. Now, let me ask you, I mean, this person is really saying it nicely. Yeah. Friend, you know, we want to improve and uh, can we watch the music, listen to the music and sing and the singing will match the music next time. How would the person take it? How would the person take it normally? Most people, how would they take it? Do they, do they, do they uh, become very happy? Oh, you're giving me suggestion and we can improve. Oh, thank you for just suggesting that to me. Would, would the person think like that? No. no. He would probably be very unhappy. And then he might rebel. He might say, I just don't like you. 
and may, may not want to cooperate with us. So it's very hard to give suggestion. In order to give suggestion, it's better to, to, to discuss and ask questions. It's better to say, um, how can we improve on the music? Uh, Cindy, what do you think we can do together uh, to make the music better? So this way, to ask questions is better. And to also appreciate people, oh, you're doing well, you work hard, you're improving. That way, you know, if you say they, you're improving, would it make them lazy and they don't want to improve anymore? No, they want to improve more. So when we appreciate people, it encourage people. So we have to understand this. Whatever we say, even though we have good intention, people might get a negative emotion. And so we have to be aware of this. Let me ask you another question. Can you notice people's emotions when they talk? Can you notice people's emotions when they talk? Yes. Yes. Now, sometimes the emotions are very obvious. Sometimes very obvious. You can tell right away the person's angry, right? The person's unhappy. But sometimes, you notice the person is not as happy or as free as before. Then you know something has changed. Something has happened. Now, I'm just using myself. You see me always free. And then one day I come to talk and then I say, let's talk about emotions today. And sometimes we have negative emotions. If I talk to you like that one day, <laughs> you say, what has happened to Pastor Yu? <laughs> what has happened to him? Then you will notice that he's not as cheerful and happy and excited as before. Then you know something has happened. If the person has, cannot handle it. But for me, you don't notice me. You know, being bored, depressed, unhappy. Because I always handle it. I always handle it immediately. Is that wise to do it? Is it wise to do it? Yes, yes it is wise to do it. If you want to be a person used by God, is it important for you to handle your emotions and your thinking? It's very important. Very important. Because if you don't handle it, out of your heart will flow, you know, the fruits of your life. The whole life will be full of frustration. I have no Christians whose life are like this. They have no friends. They always lose the job in a short time. The families break up. The husband or wife doesn't like them. And they fail in many things. Have you known people like that? Have you met people like that? They always fail. Whatever they do, they fail. It all came from the heart too. When they're negative, people don't like them. And when they talk, they talk about what? All my problems. Have you known people like this? Now, when I talk about have you known people like this, I'm encouraging you not to be like that. And when you notice people like that, you're trying to help them. Have you known people who keep talking, talking about his own problem? Do you know people like that? They just keep talking. Every time they talk, it's about their own problems. How people mistreated them. Always unhappy. <coughs> These people, they have a history of being unhappy and they keep talking in a happy way and they will lose all the friends. And there are people on the internet like that too. In WhatsApp or messages, they will always send negative messages. Someone mistreated them. It's always looking at a negative side. But this life is full of difficulties. How can you change? How can you change your thinking? The way to change is because God has a wonderful plan in our lives. No matter how difficult it is, He has the way to fix it. Do you believe that? And we have the ability by God's power to change people. Do you believe that? We can change people. If you believe you can change people, if you believe God has the power to change people, and your words can change people, and your care and your love can change people, then you can change people. But there are some people who say, oh, people are bad, they don't follow God, and they don't obey God. It's too hard to change them. 
When you think like that, when you are pessimistic, always saying negative things, you would you will find that it will come true. It will come true. If you say people are bad, you notice everyone is bad. Actually, if you pay attention to each person, can you find bad things about them? Can you find bad things about each person? Each person you can find something bad. There must be something bad. If you look into the bad thing of each person and say, this person doesn't really love God. This person has bad things. This person is not serious. He doesn't really love God. Then your thinking will be always twisted and negative. Now, if you stay with me for a long time, maybe you find me sometimes something I, did, I do wrong. And then you say, Pastor, you doesn't really love God seriously. He just pretend he loves God because I found one thing about him that is bad. <laughs> you might notice something about me. I try to change. I try to watch myself. But there might be some times that I might say something wrong or do something wrong. And when you see that one thing, does it mean this person is totally bad? No. He, and look at the whole person. He might have many good things. So when you see bad things about people, it doesn't mean this person is totally bad. He might have some bad things. He needs to help. And he needs help to change. And if we care about them and love them, we can change people. Each person is like this. This bottle. Nobody is full of water. Some people is like this. Almost full. Some people are very low. If we look at the negative side, then we always feel negative. But we, if we look at what they have and we build up on that, people can become better. I have, have you known people who always look for negative things from people? And then they always, uh, and then they begin to have negative feelings toward the person, like negative attitudes. So these are things we want to watch out. Our negative thinking could be about people. People are not good. People are not sincere and always looking for the negative side. Now they might not be sincere. But even a person who has many sins, he might have some sincerity. That if he believes in Jesus, he still has a good side. And we can build from that good side. The Christians you know, do you, have you noticed the good side and the bad side? So if you build on the good side, then they will become better. But if you always look at the bad side, and then you have negative attitude, attitude toward them, then the, the, bad, you know, the bad things will increase and increase. So the first thing is how we look at people, and how we look at ourselves. Sometimes people say, I'm no good, I cannot do it. But let me ask you, there are things we fail. Are there things you do, do well? Are there things you do well? There are things we don't do so well, right? At least we can do something to well. Then you can say to yourself, I can do something well. Say it together. I can do something well. I can improve on it. I can do better and better every day. Can we look at it this way? And people can change better and better. Even though they might have a bad side, they can still change better and better. If we all look at a positive side, can you... Think of it, if the whole church, everyone look at other people's good side and help each other, the whole church will improve, right? Sure. If the church has a negative attitude, everyone look at the bad side of other people and then, and then they gossip. Now, the bad thing is they gossip. And then they, they talk to each other about the bad thing about this person, that person, <coughs> about the minister. Very important. Very important. We don't talk, say negative things about the leaders and the... And the, and the uh, ministers, because this will destroy the ministry. Okay. If we notice anything they need improvement, we we'll go to that person directly, mm -hmm. and and then talk with them in a gentle way, and then if the pe a person uh, s s uh, space for them to grow, don't think that they will change right away. I mean, nobody is perfect. You can give suggestion, but let them grow. Just give suggestion, and don't have to force your way. And if we look at a good sign, can you picture in a church, everyone look at other people's good side, how good that church is, right? How about your family? 
Let me ask you. When people talk to you, they generally say, Oh, wow, you have... Uh, thank you for cooking the food for me. Very nice. You're doing well. You are productive. Or people say, You didn't throw the garbage. You didn't wash the dishes. You didn't wash the dishes in a... Uh, uh, you didn't wash them well. Uh, you always late. What kind of words do you hear most in the family? You did well or you did not do well? <laughs> you didn't do well. So is it going to build a good family? No. So we have that habit. I just want to say, we do have to have it, but we notice it. The thing is, you notice it and then we can change. Now God gave me this five ways to victory. Five steps, sorry. Five steps to victory. Write this down. This is not my invention. It's God's invention. Five steps to victory. The first is aware. Being aware of the problem. Aware. The second is destructive. Knowing that is destructive. Third, manage with biblical principles. Biblical. Okay. Number four, pray. Number five, choose to obey. Let's say it over again. First, aware. Second, destructive. Three, biblical or Bible. Four, pray. Five, choose to obey. Have you noticed that, you know, actually this is the Holy Spirit's way to teach us. Have you noticed that when you have sinned, when you are about to do something wrong, and then the Holy Spirit will let you know you are about to sin. Have you noticed that? The Holy Spirit let us, help us to be aware. The first step to change is awareness, aware. And the second, the Holy Spirit will tell us, this is wrong, this is not good. This will destroy your life. So it's destructive. Three, apply, apply biblical principles. The Holy Spirit will remind us to love and to forgive and to be nice to people. And number four, you pray and then you say, please help me God. And number five, and then you say to God, okay, I'll obey you. But many people will wait for a long time before they obey. Many people, let me ask you, when the Holy Spirit tells you you are sinning, do you immediately obey or you, you know, if the Holy Spirit tells you not to tell a lie, and then we will say, uh, if I don't tell a lie, then I'll get in trouble. <coughs> or if the Holy Spirit tells us not to be angry, and then we'll say, if I don't get, uh, it's not fair if I don't get angry. We, we argue with the Holy Spirit. Has that happened to you? That very often we argue with the Holy Spirit. But if you can obey God, as soon as the Holy Spirit moves in you, then you will be a strong Christian. That is something I really want you know, to, to do all the time because I know any time I resist the Holy Spirit, that's the time when God cannot work in my life. So, Hope you remember this five steps of victory. Can you say it without looking at your notes? Can you say it again? First is what? Aware. Second, destructive. Three, biblical principles. Bible. Four, pray. Number five, choose to obey. It's quite easy, right? Now, with negative thinking, you are aware. I'm negative. And then you say, this is destructive. And then you ask yourself, what does the Bible say? And then you pray to God, oh, I've been negative, I've been looking at people's bad side. And then you, you choose to begin to look at people's good side. Now, apply to your family. When you're about to say, you never clean the dishes well, you're about to say that. And then you say, if I say that, it will make him unhappy. Then you know, it's, you're aware, you know it's destructive, and then the biblical principle is to encourage, remember the good things. And then, and then you pray, Lord help me not to say that. 
And then number five, you say, um, now how, how to say it if you did not wash the dishes well? Um, what you can do, you can wash the dishes and show him how you can do it better. That's one way too. You don't have to say it. You can just wash it and, sh and then you see it and then uh, you, you wash it and then it's, it's cleaner now. So that way, uh, you're not accusing him. Are you willing to put it in practice in your home? That, can you come back tomorrow and tell me that you're changing that happened? It's very easy for us to say negative things or have negative emotions. So this method is the biblical, you know, it's the Holy Spirit's method. So whenever you have negative thoughts, whenever you say, no, I cannot do it. And then you ask yourself, is it true I cannot do it? Now, for instance, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Go tell that person about Jesus. Has the Holy Spirit speak to you like that? And then you say, I cannot do it. No, I cannot do it. No, I'm too shy. Has it happened to you? <coughs> Are you aware sometimes we resist the Holy Spirit? That we did not obey? Do you have a struggle inside? Finally, who wins? Finally, in your case, who wins? Let me ask you. Does the Holy Spirit win most of the time? Or do you win most of the time? That's good. If you can do that, that's wonderful. You know, for me, whenever I come across people, I always try to find ways to bring up the gospel. I always try to find ways to bring the gospel to them. And I keep thinking, what can I do, what can I do? Like when I come, came on the plane, the moment I get to the seat, I will greet the person, say hi to the person, and see how the person responds, and find ways to talk to the person more, to build up the relationship, to li listen to the person and bring the gospel. And then sometimes I didn't find a chance. One time, there was a man who covered his whole, whole head with a blanket when I arrived. He was covering himself. And all the way he was covering himself. Until at the end, when we were about to get off, he took off his blanket. And then I said, oh, you had a good sleep. So, you know, I always ask God, is this a good time to speak? So whenever I find ways to connect the person, you know, I was thinking, what can I do, what can I do? So in my heart, I'm aware, I want to help the person. And in my heart, I might say, well, he covers himself, so I cannot do anything. But in the last moment, he uncovered himself. And then I talked to him. And then I was surprised. When I talked to him about God is real, he said, is that true? I want to hear about it. <laughs> Seldom do I come across people like that. And then I told him about it. And then he said, I want to know more about it. And then he gave me his email. And then I, sent, I, I told him I sent him an email of the information for him. So every time, you know, I will keep asking myself. Now, let me tell you, in my heart too, sometimes I say, it seems awkward to do it now. It seems awkward. And then in my heart, there is some resistance. But I keep convincing myself, try to find a way. Try to find a way. Like when I came, there was a Japanese woman sitting next to me. And when I talked to her, she seemed not to be interested. No, not much response. But every time when, uh, when the uh, air hostess came and bring the a food tray, I would hand it to her. And then every time she want the tray, uh, you know, the empty tray taken away, then I'll take it from her. And she said, thank you. And then I said to her, are you Chinese? Uh, she said, no. I'm Japanese. And then I start the conversation. And then I, I later, you know, I, she was willing to pray with me. And she said she saw flowers in a garden when she prayed. I said, that is a vision from God. So in my heart, there are struggles too. But I would always tell myself, obey God, obey God, obey God. <laughs> Can you begin to do that? When you are negative or when you are unhappy, then you say, I'm aware I'm unhappy. Have you noticed days that you are unhappy? You wake up, you're unhappy about something, 
Have you noticed days like that? Yeah. Now, some people will just stay unhappy for the whole day. What can we do? Now, let me tell you, for me, when I wake up, the first thing I do, even in the middle of the night when I go to the washroom, when I, in the middle of the night, when I woke up, I'll say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> I would always do that. In the morning, I always say that God loves me, Hallelujah. And then I continue in a joyful mood. It's best to start in the morning and then keep going for the whole day to be joyful. That way, it's easier to drive out negative emotions. But I want to say, negative emotions are hard to handle. As I said, I had fears for years. I have fear for years. Because people criticized me when I started to, to, to do ministry. When I was a lay person, people were very happy what I did in the church. But when I became a pastor, people were critical. And there was one co-worker who criticized me behind my back. And to my wife too. Uh, complained to my wife. And, and, uh, and in that process, I was always hearing from my wife the negative words. And I was unhappy and I had fear for a long time. At that time, I had not experienced the Holy Spirit. But I kept praying to God. I said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, help me. Help me. I felt unhappy in my heart and I felt fear. And, but after I keep praying to God for a long time, I noticed that I start to break through. My emotions start to be more peaceful. But still, I have fear sometimes. <laughs> And after experience of the Holy Spirit, I did, I, I, I did it in a few ways. I convinced myself, I've been doing well, I've been work, hard working, I've done my best, I have no reason to criticize myself. And actually at that time, nobody criticized me. Already, nobody criticized me. People were saying, you're doing well. But I still had a fear inside. Do you sometimes carry negative feelings? from some people who criticize you from the past. That you still have the fear. I still have the fear. But I tell myself, I'm working hard and I have the wisdom of God to teach people and I have the power of the Holy Spirit to change people. I'm really doing well now. So I really don't need to criticize myself anymore. And so I, I, I tell myself, you know, I can be joyful. I can be thankful for myself. And I kept praising God. And, I, and then every time I do that, I'm peaceful, joyful. But the next day, it came back again. And I kept doing it every day until I don't have that fear. Now, some people have depression for a long time, but they don't pay attention and they don't kind of overcome. And I hope that we all become aware of our emotions and negative thinking and handle it. And let me tell you, negative thinking is easier to change if you're willing to follow God. For instance, you say, well, I cannot serve God. And then God tell you, you can do it. You can do it. And then, and then you try and then you say, yes, I can do it. And then, and then you say, okay, I will receive training to be able to serve God. And you change that thinking. It's easier than to change feelings. Let me use an illustration. Someone just hurt you. And then you say, as I said before, do you have to take the negative words of people seriously? No. So you say, I don't have to be affected by the person. And then you praise God. You're more peaceful. And then you go to sleep. And in the middle of the night, you wake up. What happened? The first thing you think about is about that person. Have you noticed that? Did it happen to you? Before you sleep, you said, okay, I will not be affected by the person. I want to be joyful and peaceful. But when you wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning, the first thing you think about is that person's words to you. It's negative words to you. Have you noticed that? Because emotions are harder to get away. Emotions are harder to clear. What can you do? In the morning, you wake up, immediately you praise God. You say, I have reasons to praise God. I have been doing well. Yes. Now can you say it with me? God loves me. God loves I, have me. I have reason to be happy. And I have followed God. And I, have followed I have loved God. God. I, have loved God. God. I have obeyed God. I have, I have reasons to be happy about myself. Jesus is happy about me. 
so I can be happy about myself. Even if I fail in something, I can always improve. If I cannot do something well, I can do it better next time. I don't have to feel bad about it. I can be positive, I can be joyful and happy. So you keep saying that to yourself, and then you keep praising God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah, I can be joyful. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. That way, you will change your emotion. Now, even if you cannot change it completely, you keep doing it for the whole day. After a while, your negative emotions will be removed, and you begin to have positive emotions every day. Do you want to live like that? Yes. Is it very hard? Is it very hard? To change negative emotions is hard. But if you keep doing it every day, you can be joyful every day. Let me ask you, when you wake up every morning, do you have some pressure? Some pressure and saying, oh, I need more money. Oh, there is no way out. It's difficult. Do you sometimes feel like that? <laughs> so, when you wake up, even when you did not sleep well, what can you do? If you don't sleep well, and then you say, oh, I didn't sleep well, and then you have negative emotions, and then the whole day will be ruined. But if you did not sleep well, you say, if I didn't sleep well, I won't die. <laughs> right? I can still have energy, right? Even when you don't sleep well. You still have energy. I can be positive yes. and I have energy to do it. Yes, and you tell yourself I have energy and then you'll find that even when you sleep very little, you still have energy to do it, yes. right? Yes. Even when things are not favored, favorable. For instance, let me tell you, I, I told you already, when I came, I missed the plane and I felt unhappy. But then I tell myself, I don't want to feel unhappy. I want to thank God, even if I have to come later, even if I have to, have to pay some money, then I still can come. <coughs> then I say, I don't have to feel unhappy. And then I pray to God, you know, and, 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 and rejoice in the Lord. And then God, please open the way for me. And then finally I went to the counter and then asked them, and then they said the plane has returned. <laughs> so I said, I thank God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But then luggage didn't come because, you know, it's changed the plane. And that night, when I pray, you know, I, I was, I had some burden. But then, God told me, you know, God told me that because I switched plane, and the luggage was in the first plane, and they found I was not there, so they took the luggage down. So God told me that. And I said, next morning I'm going to go to the airport to fix it. But still, I worry. Would someone have stolen that luggage? And then I tell myself, God will protect it. God will protect my luggage. Because God loves me, He will protect my luggage. But I still have this struggle in the middle of the night. And I, but I keep praying. And the next, in the morning, I've, I felt better. Actually, when I wake up, I feel better. Because I always maintain myself in a positive mood. I felt better. It's only in the middle of the night when I woke up and then I felt pressure. I felt pressure. But I immediately praised God. So that is how I handle my emotions. In heaven, we won't have negative emotions anymore. But on earth, we all still have negative emotions. Still have negative thinking. The point is whether you change it or not. Whether you handle it or not. The key to success in ministry is we will handle our negative thinking and negative emotions. And then your whole life will be full of joy. There are always something we did not do very well. But you say, I have done my best. I can be joyful. So it's, it can be a struggle. It can be a battle for many people every day. But after a while, you begin to have more joy than pressure. Okay, now what I've talked about, I hope you apply. In order to apply this, you have to be applying it intentionally and freely. God is helping me. I have reasons to be happy. 
I can relax and handle it. Even if I cannot handle it very well, it's okay. I, if I keep improving every day, I'll get better and better. So that's the key. Don't put pressure on yourself. But every time we've, we've tried, you say congratulations to yourself. I'm doing well this time. I have improved. That is a positive way of looking at life. Let me ask you, have you been always negative? Uh, not always positive automatically? <coughs> Are you positive automatically? No. Nobody is positive automatically. You notice that people are automatically, are people positive or negative? Negative. Yeah, automatically we are, we are negative. So you have to change that way of thinking. Change it. That you change it to be as soon as possible to change your, your mood to positive. And if you have victory in this, and always rely on God, it's not just by, by, by your will, it's praying. Believing God is helping me, God is happy with me, so I have reasons to be happy. So every day believe that. That way you have more strength. Now you notice, look at me when I share the message. You notice that I always have energy. People who are unhappy don't have energy. When they talk, they don't have energy. But when you are happy, you have energy, you have joy, you have peace. And you have motivation and continual <laughs> motivation. Now some people lose the motivation very soon. But when you follow God and have good relationship with Him, then you have good motivation. God is going to use me. I can do greater and greater things. Greater things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now this five steps to victory, also you can apply to yesterday's message about handling people's problems. When you're aware you're affected by someone, and then you say it's destructive, and then you apply biblical principle, and then you pray, and then you choose not to be affected, and choose to be loving to them. So the same way, you can apply to anything. Mm -hmm.